So hello and welcome folks. Do you sometimes wonder that we're paying a little bit too much in taxes? You know, it seems like we do all this hard work and then the IRS takes away part of our paycheck. And this is after you pay all these taxes. You got social security, income tax, sales tax, this tax. All these taxes, they add up to a lot of money, folks. But here's the deal. It doesn't have to be like this. Did you know that you have full control over how much tax you want to pay to the federal and state level? Did you know that? But everything and everything starts by good bookkeeping, folks. I come across friends, family, clients who have filed taxes and they have not done any bookkeeping. Don't make that mistake because it always makes you want to just bang my head against the wall. <laughs> this needs to stop, guys. We're going to teach you today how to save on taxes, the top seven tips. And we're going to give you an extra one on how to save taxes on your own house. If you have bought a house in the past one year, you're going to buy a house today or this year. Doesn't matter, folks. You need to be aware of this from everything, starting from closing, escrow, if you paid any points, if you paid any taxes. If you want a house, you have property taxes on your motorcycle, motor vehicle, RVs, and so on and so forth. It doesn't really matter. You got to get your taxes back from your house, folks, from your properties. That you so let's get on with it, folks. We're going to make tax saving exciting and we're going to teach you how to save taxes through your property, through your house. If that sounds like a good topic for you, stick around to learn more. Hola, como estas? Konnichiwa, ni hao, salam, namaste, kef halik privet to all my friends all over the world. If you like this content, please don't forget to like and subscribe and click the notification button and show some love for your boy AK. Let's start with the first topic, which is your mortgage statement. So at the end of every year, you will get a letter from your vendor showing your how much interest you've paid, how much taxes you've paid, how much principal you have paid. This will include PMI as well. From that statement, folks, all the interest that you have accumulated over time and paid to this lender is tax deductible up to a certain point. And I'll show you how much. For this to happen, you must own the property. Now, it sounds like an obvious thing, right? <laughs> own a property, yes. But you'd be surprised how many times I've seen clients who were too young to buy a house or did not have good credit and their parents ended up signing up for them. So they did not own the deed or the title or were not even on the loan. If that happens, there is a part in Schedule A where you can designate yourself as an equitable owner owner of the property and by doing that you too can actually file taxes and get deductions in that form you have to also make an amendment or state clearly to the irs that the person whose name is on the loan will not be claiming any taxes on this now next up is the hud one statement folks the hud one statement okay when you go to closing what is hud one is basically it's showing all the details of your closing right so once you get that hud one statement you want to see how much taxes have you paid Sometimes a seller ends up paying certain amount of taxes for the next six months. Sometimes the buyer ends up paying, you know, part of the taxes. Let's say, for example, the closing happens in September, but the taxes are paid from June to September. That means you can get a deduction on those taxes if those taxes were included in part of your closing package. Okay, have your CP or someone look at your HUD-1 statement and find out more how much taxes have you already paid. If you have more questions on this, you can go to portal.hud.gov and we'll give you more information. Now let's talk about the fun stuff, which is a lot of what I have is personal property, such as motor vehicles, RV, motorcycles, uh, motor homes, anything of that nature that your county or city may charge you taxes on, personal property tax, which in Virginia is pretty high. There are some workarounds for that. You can also register your car or vehicle in some other state or city if you have an office there. For example, we have offices in DC, so we register some of our vehicles in DC. You can certainly do that and it's totally legal because that vehicle is operating under the business name. If you can't do that, that's okay. What you can do is make sure that those taxes are deducted from your taxes when you file them. In fact, it's line number seven on Schedule A form, so please have a look at that. Now, keep in mind there's a minor caveat in this is that you cannot deduct everything. For example, if there was the county spends money on fixing sewer or doing some improvement in the city or the county, uh, those taxes cannot be deducted from your taxes. However, what I have seen in my experience that IRS never challenges, so it's worth trying to putting the entire amount in your taxes and seeing if the IRS would challenge that. So now sales tax, right? Some states don't have income tax, but most states do have sales tax. So sales tax is also a deduction for your home purchase items. Did you know that? I did not know that folks 10 years ago, but now I do. And now you know that too. 
So make sure you have deductions for your sales taxes that you're paying in. It could be pretty high in some states. When you deduct your sales tax, you don't have to report the state's tax refund as an income. And that's the great benefit, folks, okay? The best part is you don't have to track all these taxes. You can just go to irs.gov and use their calculator online. I'll put a link down below for that calculator for the sales tax, okay? Now, next up is mortgage tax deduction. So you have a big mortgage, let's say, I don't know, two, three hundred thousand dollars right? You can only deduct the amount, the original amount that you paid to buy the house. For example, you bought the house for $200,000. So it's gonna be $200,000 plus up to $100,000, plus any repair loans that you may have taken. Some banks will give you a loan to repair your property. That could also be included. So let's say you have $50,000 in repair. So it's 250 plus up to $100,000 is what's tax deductible if you're paying interest on that, okay? It's only the interest, not the principal. So keep that in mind. Now what happens if you refinance the house? So let's say your house value increased from $250,000 to let's say $400,000, right? You cannot start deducting your taxes from $400,000. It has to be the time of acquisition amount that you bought the house originally for. Now what happens if you have multiple properties, right? That could happen to some people. I am one of them. If that happens, you can pick the top two properties, okay, which has the highest amount of interest rate. Let's say some investor properties cost as high as 7% interest. So you can certainly take those two properties and deduct the interest from those two highest rate properties, okay, to deduct your taxes. And see what I told you, paying high interest is not always a bad thing. Sometimes it can benefit you while filing taxes. Every problem is an opportunity. What a wonderful way to save on taxes. Now, Timeshare, some people may have timeshare. Some people have some money, they have extra timeshare. Maybe they go there in summer, maybe they rent it out to Airbnb. Those timeshares are also tax deductible from the interest standpoint. So if you have a timeshare, it could be considered a second home and you can save on taxes, deduct that amount. Now what happens to reverse mortgages? Some people have reverse mortgage, which is a very high interest rate. Again, all that interest up to a million dollars is tax deductible. Now let me also give you a piece of advice and an expert tip that somebody may not tell you. If you were to take a home equity loan from your house, right? Let's say we had that example where our house just blew up the value from $250,000 to $400,000. If you want to take out a home equity line of credit from your house up to $100,000 or more, it's totally tax deductible, okay? You don't have to report that as an income, even though you can use that money to pay off your student loans, you know, your, I don't know, your car bills, your Rolex watch, whatever you want to get, guys and girls, it doesn't really matter. It's not what you make always, folks. It's what you keep is what I'm trying to teach everybody. So try to keep as much as you can to yourself. It's for you, right? It's your hard-earned money. Over 70 million people file their own taxes in this country, and over 70 million people also use a CPA or an accountant to file their taxes. But did you know that these CPAs, their job is not to save you on taxes? Yes, their job description does not say anywhere they're supposed to save you on taxes. Their job description is to keep your accounting, keep your books, and file your taxes. Please have a look at entrepreneurextraordinary.com. I have experts on my team that can help you save on taxes, and they understand how taxes work, folks. So please, please take advantage of that. So next up is state renter's credit. Some states offer you know, these state renter's credit to renters depending on their income, uh, the state, and the age of the person. Some states offer that. You can find information about that on your state website. So go to your state website and type in state renter's credit and see what information you can find. Sometimes it's up to 150, 60 bucks a month for renter's credit. Please don't miss out on that credit because it can save you a lot of money in the long run on taxes. Next up is energy tax credit, folks. This is one of my favorite ones, okay? If you like solar, if you wanna save energy, and if you wanna put some panels in your house, your state, usually your state or city provide and have programs. Even the government, the federal government has grants and programs that can allow you to get a loan from the government. So go to your tax or county and call them, ask them what are the incentives and rebates and grants that you may have for alternate forms of energy, such as you know solar panels, or uh, maybe having a hub of energy or a battery in your house. The best part is that this becomes part of your overall property tax assessment, folks, and this loan can be paid over time. And you can deduct a lot of this amount in your taxes, so it's like a double whammy, right? In a good way. So again, everything good starts with good bookkeeping. So if you're listening to this video, please start to do some homework, write down your receipts, your invoices, expenses, sales tax, whatever you're paying, property tax, your mortgage statement interest. And once you have everything in order, it will take you two minutes for your tax professional to help you save thousands of dollars of taxes. It's always good to have a nice check, right? You can have a nice check and look at it and be like, wow, 
I accomplished something. I worked so hard for it. I woke up every morning, go to work and look what I got back, right? With that, I'll try to wrap up this video real quickly for you. I want to thank you guys for uh, getting us over 4,000 subscribers. Thank you so much. I love, I love you all for this and I can't thank enough. I'm going to be making a lot of tax videos. If you have a favorite topic you want me to talk about, taxes for business, taxes for single family parents and all this and that, let me know. I can help you. I can drop some knowledge bombs in that video and give you a new video to look at. The tax season is coming very, very soon. So get ready. Get on it. Don't be slacking. <laughs> get on your taxes, guys, because it's going to save you thousands of dollars. You make maybe buy a new car, a new shoe, a new watch or, or something, whatever you want to buy. Thank you very much for joining and I'll see you in the next video. Have a fantastic day.